look really poised, Alexa. Thank you. Yeah, you have, you have great posture. Years of ballet. Yeah, Thank years you. of ballet. Okay. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm in LA here with Alexa. Yeah, boy. <laughs> and joining us in New York is Demi Ramos. What's up, Demi? What's up, you guys? Uh, you're bringing back the hat. For years, Demi wore a hat of the day, and oh. now she's got the, the ball cap on. Looks like she's ready to get, go to the U.S. Open or something. Let's right. go. You already no. know. Yeah. Come to the, the Bronx. I'm going to bring and... that back, Jordan. Huh? I'm going to bring that back, actually. The hat of okay. the day. Do it. Let's do it. I support this. It. Yeah. Is my hair? How janky is my hair? Oh, well, that's cool. My hair is so janky. I'm going to fix that real quick. It's fine. No worries. Uncats. Yeah. That's yeah, go. It's messy. a concept. It's the, me- it's the messy. I'm going to just blame yeah. everything today on the eclipse. Let's just. Yeah. We, the bad. Everyone the bad, gets a pass. Let's talk about mm-hmm. this eclipse, right? Mm-hmm. Speaking yeah. of spirituality, um, we know you're a bit of a spiritual person. Mm-hmm. As some of our guests are on the show. What, what's going on with this eclipse? Everybody can blame everything that's happened this week on the eclipse. Do you stand by that? Well, I mean, I, I don't know if I would blame the eclipse, so to say, but I mean, aren't we still in Mercury retrograde at the moment, yeah. if I'm correct? Yeah, people still blaming stuff on Mercury in retrograde. Listen, Melinda's in the microwave. Like, come on. <laughs> Do you, are, Alexa, are you the kind of person that like uh, bases, like, are you into like, if someone is Scorpio or someone is an Aries, you kind of like judge them a certain way? Absolutely, I mm. do. Yes. What is the most Absolutely. judged um, sign? What's Oh my God. Um, okay. Well, so I am a Sagittarius. And so by nature, I am obviously very hot headed and very blunt and to the point. Uh, just out of people that I've met, uh, typically not a fan of Leo men. I am a Leo man. Oh, you get, that's okay. You get a that's pass. Okay. You get that's a pass. Okay. And okay. you, you get a pass. Uh, most Geminis as well. I don't like, that's but, uh, funny. yeah. You that's pass. You're cool. Thanks. I pre- I'm, I'm a so, cancer. So, that's so generous of you. You know, I, I tend to know a lot of Libra boys, though. I don't know what that's about. Libra boys. Uh-huh. That's, that's a good name for like a song or an EP or, or, or like, a band. Uh, Libra boys. So yeah. y'all were the a Libra band. boys. Like the, a hardcore band, a hardcore band yeah. called Libra boys. Or a team of some sort. Yes. yes. Emo band. Yeah. <laughs> Libra <definitely>. United. <laughs> yeah. So let's get down to like why Alexa's is here. Mm-hmm. This is a really interesting time in your career. Yes. When you've been in Korea for years, you become this big K-pop star in Korea. I, I know like, does it kind of embarrass you? You're like, you're such a big star in Korea. Uh, it's, it's, it's not exactly embarrassing, but it's just, it's, it's a strange thing. Cause like, I, I always hate using the C word to describe myself. Celebrity. I really don't like saying that word personally. So yeah. it's always kind of odd for me when someone's like, Oh, but you're so accomplished and so successful. And, da, 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 da. and I'm yeah. like, Big, uh, big time for you. The pride of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, shucks. Yeah, I, uh, I'm from Kansas City, so I got my Royals, okay. Royals hoodie on now because it's baseball season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are you a sports person at all? I can watch it. My mom really enjoyed football growing up, so I really, I have fond memories of watching like the Super Bowl with my mom, and she would have her fantasy football team come over, and we'd have a barbecue and everything. Oh, wow. But if you ask me, well, who is this player and what's their position? I'm like. They do the touchdown. The touchdown I, guys. The touchdown guys. Another band name. Another band name, touchdown guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but for real, um, you're transitioning into the American market. Yes. Um, going, you're doing English language music. Yes. Um, you got that song Sick Out. Yeah. Which boy. is sick. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, easy way to describe it. <laughs> so, what's fascinating to me is what's the transition like been for you mm. to go from this Korean K-pop choreography, all this cyberpunk imagery that you're yeah. known for to mm. doing like straight up sort of like American rock, pop rock sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, we've been wanting to really, you know, dip our little toesy woesies into the pool of the American market for a while, especially after American song contest two years ago. And we saw how the general public received me, not only just as a K-pop artist, but through the English song that I competed with on the show. And we, you know, we always had demos sitting in the back pocket. We had things, you know, locked away in the vaults and we decided to break them out and, you know, record a few of them and decide which one would be, you know, the first one to be let out the gate. And it just so happened to be sick. And uh, so do you have a whole album in the vault? Like, what do you have, like, ready to go? Like, what can you tease? Right I now? have recorded at least eight songs. Um, whether they're all going to be in the album or not, whether it's going to be a mini or a full, we're not completely sure yet. But I have recorded so many songs. I have written so many songs. And we're also going to record more when I get back to Korea. So 
So you still you're still based in Korea? Yes, I've been living there for the past six years. In Seoul? Yes, in Seoul. Yeah, because I guess that'd be the, the center of the entertainment industry. Since it's like, yeah. or is there like other parts of? I know I know nothing about like the Korean like the geography of like where. That's okay. Because you know, because in, in you know in America you have like L.A. Is L.A. New York, thing, yeah. Kind of Nashville, if yes. you're a certain time. You know, mm-hmm. Nashville's really opening up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, first of all, your nails. That's, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, the nails are just like. Now, is this like a, how often do you get this done? Oh, goodness. I really only get my nails done whenever I have like important performances coming up or if I have a music video. Um, I typically try to take a break as much as I can in between because- Are these your LA press nails right here? These are my, I have to be on tour for three weeks nails and they held up just fine. They have not broke. They're sturdy. They're good. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Well, that's when you become a big K-pop star. You can afford like the real nice fake nails. Yeah. I mean, these are, they're not press-ons. There's like legit like acrylic extensions. So. It's nice. Thank nice. You. Nice. Wait, Demi, what did you say? Well, no, press-ons are a really big thing right now with the girlies. Mm-hmm. Um, but also a really big thing with the girlies are literal like actual jewelry like you have on right now on your nails. Yeah. I've never, I've never went that direction with nails. Like, I, you know, I'm a little bit, yeah, I haven't gone there yet. I want, I'd love to try, but how do you get things done? Like, do you have a, you know what I mean? Like, what are the. I mean, honestly, I live my life pretty damn normally. I'm not going to lie. The only struggle is opening soda cans and uh, taking rubber bands out of my hair. For that, I Untying have. Untying a knot. Untying a knot. Oh, I can do that much. But when it comes to my hair, it's just everything gets looped around all the stones and gems I have here. So it's like, I require much assistance with that. <laughs> This has been Nail Talk, Nail Talk with Jordan and Alexa. Uh, new episodes. No, oh, so <laughs> so your your traditions. But the fascinating to me, and I know a couple of people uh, here in town who have co-written K-pop songs, mm-hmm. and that's like a whole industry of having like an American person on like the writing team and stuff. Oh. Um, but what um, you didn't grow up speaking Korean. Uh, that's been well documented. You've said that in about every interview. How you, yeah. But but when you went over to Korea. Were you fluent? Like how much, what was the, the acclimation process like to live in Korea? So that's the thing. When I was in my last year of college before dropping out and moving across the globe, I taught myself how to read and write the language because it's a fairly easy alphabet to learn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you showed me a word in Korean, I could read it, but could I tell you what it meant? No. So, you know, I went to Korea just knowing how to read and write things. I knew maybe two sentences of a basic introduction, but I had the worst American accent. I mean, granted, my Korean still is not perfect. I still have a kind of a funky intonation with things, but I, I'm not a native speaker. Don't judge me. Don't come for me. But uh, I, I went to a language academy for five months, studied the basics of grammar, sentence structure, you know, listening, writing, reading, and everything else has been basically self-taught since then. So. And when you're immersed in it, obviously. Yeah, immersive learning faster. is the best way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elena was also someone who um, wasn't, uh, you know, fluent with Spanish during, I think, yeah, pretty much the entire time that she was an artist, like singing and touring, like singing Spanish songs throughout. Fun fact. Who? I'm so sorry. I didn't hear the name. Selena. Selena. Oh, Selena? Selena. Really? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Well, and obviously, you know, sort of the the archetype for mm. what you did is Jay Park. Uh-huh. Um, what, what, what's I a, think you should represent yeah, like your your culture, regardless to what extent it is, and regardless if how well you can you know the out you know the alphabet or anything, right? You know what I mean? Mm. We all are derived from somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Now the cultural part of it, yes, um, because your mom is from Korea, but she was adopted yes. in the states, mm-hmm. so she didn't grow up in Korea. No, um, so the cultural thing, like the the customs, mm-hmm. you know, just like how to greet people, mm-hmm. how you know what's polite, what's not polite. Right, was that an easy adapt? Uh, adaptation to make? Um, I would like to say because I was raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Southern hospitality is a thing. You are raised to be polite and courteous to everybody. Yeah. So, you know, tacking on, you know, when you greet somebody in a room, you just have to bow 
that's really not much of a change from just being jovial when you enter a room. Mm. I think the only thing that I had problems with when it came to, I guess, culturally was in Korean, much like other languages, there is a formal speech pattern and an informal speech pattern. Sure. Um, when I went to my language academy, I learned everything in the formal speech pattern. But the thing is, um, if I were to talk to somebody my age or younger, um, you can use the informal. But if I was to speak to someone older or, you know, more accomplished than I am, you use the formal one. So when I got onto this, you know, um, survival show I was in in Korea and there were girls that were like 13, 14 years old talking to me, I would address them formally. And like they would laugh and they'd be like, oh my gosh, you can just be comfortably around me. And I'd be like, if formally, I'd be like, okay, understood. <laughs> like, it's just, oh, that was a struggle for me. Yeah, yeah. And are you, at this point, can you even walk down the street in Seoul without getting mobbed? Or is it like... I'm, I'm pretty safe in Korea, not gonna lie. My name, my, my face and my name aren't plastered all over the walls in Korea like some of my friends. So I'm, I'm pretty safe to go out and do what I want and grab a drink with the girls. Like, I'm good. Okay, I'm that's good. nice. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice freedom to have. Yeah. Um, and the other part of it is, of course, the choreography. Yes. Um, were you a good dancer growing up? I, we already talked, we talked about before we started recording, we talked about how you grew up a, a theater kid. Yes. So uh, you can do a, a mean jazz square. Oh, a mean jazz square, a mean yeah. kickball change. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, don't get me started on the fuates mm. for the ballet stuff. But um, growing up, I was in dance classes ever since I was about two years old. I started with ballet. I did tap. I did you know, hip hop studio, hip hop in the middle of Oklahoma. Yeah, um, authentic, I'm sure. Oh, so authentic, mm -hmm. the realist. Yeah. Um, and then I was on my team's competitive dance in my team, my school's competitive dance teams, and I did palm as well through high school, yeah. show choir as well. My major was in musical theater. Um, so dance has always just been a very vital, you know, core part of my life. So uh, Demi went to an art school, and ah. I did musical theater. So this is kind of our. We're, we're familiar with this. Our wheelhouse. Yes. Um, do you have a favorite musical? Uh, yes, without a doubt. My favorite one, which I've seen, I think, at this point, maybe six times, is Phantom of the Opera. I saw it in New York. I saw it whenever I was traveling to Tulsa. Um, I, I, I freaking love Phantom of the Opera. Wait, Wait what like, is the Phantom of the Opera about? I actually have no idea. It's about idea. a Phantom of the of Opera. The opera. <laughs> Yeah, but like, is it a love story? Is it a tragic It's a, it's story? a love story. It's it's drama. Like, if, think of a Shakespearean tragedy set in an old French opera house and there's really great elaborate costumes and music and everything. I have a really good idea. Yeah. So when you become really rich and famous, like yes. legit, you know, like like you have like Rihanna money, mm -hmm. um, Rihanna you, could, money. you should like buy the original chandelier like from Broadway as like a as like a collector piece the way I would and like oh. hang it and like hang it in your like main room but I need to have it like you know set up to where like when guests enter it does the swing down thing yes. just to scare the shit out of people yes exactly yeah. thinking ahead yeah 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 well as long as you didn't say cats we're good I like cats. We're not going to talk about the movie but I like cats there's so much physical prowess necessary to be in that show Mr. Yeah. Mistopheles. Oh, well, hit, hit, a, hit a nerve right there. Yeah. Hit a nerve right there. Yeah. So, uh, it's so, a pretty known thing that like you, like your, your story about being adopted, right? My mom, yes. Mm -hmm. It's like, have you carried that like throughout your life as kind of something like a reason, that much more of a reason to kind of like, you know, live your life to the fullest and, and fulfill your dreams? I mean... The fact that my mom is adopted, you know, it really did kind of motivate me to, you know, want to be the best daughter I could be for my mom because it's like I know what she struggled with growing up, you know, not exactly having a relationship with her biological mother. And, you know, I'm not going to get into personal details, obviously, but, you know, adoptive mother wasn't always exactly the person she could turn to for situations. So I wanted to be a good daughter to my mother and, you know not let her down by the fact that, you know, I'm not going to, you know, go to medical school. I'm going to sing and dance on stage and wear shiny costumes, but you know, I'm going to be damn good at it. And I want you to be proud of me in that sense. So, and yeah. How, I'm sure she's supportive at this point. 100%. At yeah. this point, yes. Both my parents are completely on board. Like you're doing great. Do they, do they brag about you? Like to their friends? Like, Hey, like our daughter's on TV. See, 
they like to say they don't humble brag, but every so often my dad will message me. He'll be like, hey, so I, I met this client on a phone call and uh, we got to talking about personal lives and they said their kids like K-pop. And he was like, well, <laughs> my daughter's a K-pop star. <laughs> and there's always fun little conversations like that that happen within the family group chat. So, yeah, 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 yeah. But you're like still like a kid. When you when you go into your mom's house, it's like it doesn't matter that you're like a star. Yeah, it doesn't, well, it doesn't matter that I'm pushing 30. I still like my mom's cooking. I still, mm. you know, watch ridiculous movies with my folks together. I mean, when I was back, we, my dad and I love watching like bad movies, like not even bad as in like, oh, this is like horrendously made, but it's just funny bad, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Willy's Wonderland, that type stuff. Right. Nick right, Cage right. movies. Yeah. Nick Cage. Yeah. Do you have a favorite action movie? Favorite action movie would be, oh my God. Um, well, it's, do you like, uh, like uh fast and furious type stuff or? I don't mind it. I've seen the series, but it's not exactly something I'm quite diehard about, but I'm diehard. Um, mm. I, I'm more of a horror buff, to be honest. Oh, okay. Yeah. You like the scary stuff? I do. Demi, you kind of like scary movies, don't you? Um, I don't have, honestly, the the capacity to like follow a story that is like two hours long. So it's like, it has to be scary or something just rom com just something to the point mm-hmm. otherwise i'm gonna start thinking about other yeah. things and take on my phone mm-hmm. and start chatting with people you know what i mean so you know what i mean a scary movie what's your scary like what's your your favorite scary movie i mean there's a handful that i really love such good korean horror films do you have you gotten into those much for me personally just just my opinion i'm not like slam on the country or nothing for me korean movies korean horror movies do not scare me personally oh um i've watched a variety of things like that as a challenge well japanese Mm. movies thai movies korean movies allegedly thai horror movies are supposed to be the scariest but i I tend to be laughing whenever i watch them oh i don't find anything i'm a big weenie about scary movies oh really I, i can't no i'm i'm good godspeed soldier even like pg-13 stuff like the sixth sense freaked me the hell really? out. Really? Yeah, yeah, I'm a big weenie. I I don't want to talk about it anymore. Fair. Yeah. Fair, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> were you so, guys, either of you, like, were you the type to, like, do some weird thing as, like, a nine-year-old where, you know what I mean, like, you thought something was in the closet, so, like, you know, you, like, didn't sleep towards the closet, you, like, kind of, like, stayed up in the corner, like... I thought that was just me. I, I dead ass. I saw a part of, fr- of, uh, of, fr- um... Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy hey. Krueger. And I thought that if I didn't sleep towards my closet that he was going to pop out of my closet. So I I know exactly what you're talking about, Demi. Wow. Uh, I mean, in my case, mm. I uh, because I'm from Oklahoma, which is Native American land, there's there's a lot of, you know, spiritual energy on those lands. And every now and then I would feel an unwelcome presence. So, you know, I would I would put like salt on my windowsills and everything just to keep things out. That so, does the yeah. juju, the bad juju out. Yeah. 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 That'd be fun. That'd, I'd like to see you. You'd be good on a ghost hunting show. I would love to go ghost hunting. Oh my God. Cause it, hey, you've never been ghost hunting? No, I've been to LA so many times and I still have never been to the Hotel Cecil. Oh. It is my goal. Yeah. Make it a priority next 100%. time. 100%. Yeah. When you came in, yeah. you were you were noticing like the, the crystals and kind of like spiritual stuff that's mm-hmm. in the apartment. I actually like had a friend that I bumped into and she was like, do you want to just bump into this crystal store with me? And I was like, what's that? And we went in and she's like, why don't you get a crystal? And I literally looked around. There's like 5,000 crystals and each yeah. one represented something different. And she was like, yeah, I just got one for my boyfriend. I'm like, what is this crystal going to do? Like, I would be like, you know, so what's your favorite crystal? You know what I mean? Um, I mean, several reasons behind. I am quite partial to the amethyst. Um, I just, I remember when I was a kid, before I knew anything about, you know, like spirituality and everything like that, we would go hiking in Colorado a lot as a family. And in Colorado, they have, you know, crystal caves and everything. And I remember uh, getting pieces of amethyst as a kid, just collecting those because I was a kid that collected rocks and I like shiny too. things. I've, I collected rocks as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, amethyst is also one of the stones that's pertinent to uh, the sign of Pisces, which is my mom. She's a Pisces. Um, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why I like amethyst, but I have so many amethyst pieces in my apartment. Yeah. Well, wow. I want to talk about, uh, American song contest. Yeah. Um, first of all, I think it's a bummer. They didn't do more of it. Um, yeah. First yeah. and only season, first and only winner. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. First and only winner. Yeah. So what was, I mean, I'm not going to ask the general, like what was the experience like, but it, did it help in terms of like kind of adapting to an American TV audience? Like, um, what was what was it like doing an American show after having done stuff in Korea? Yeah, um, I mean, 
not so much in adapting to an American audience in general, but the thing is adapting once again to a live studio audience because right after I debuted back in 2019, the pandemic hit. So I went from performing on, you know, broadcast stations with, you know, fans in the audience to performing to the freaking Jimmy Jibs and the showrunners and the show producers. There was nobody that came in to watch because, you know, the pandemic was so sure. severe. And so I don't quite remember if my comeback I had the month prior to me leaving for American Song Contest, I don't remember if there was audience allowed in at that time. Probably not. But getting able to, being able to perform, you know, at the NBC studios with an actual audience once again, it was just so cathartic. It was just so, like, relieving to be like, okay, I can actually see people seeing me again. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, do you have, when it comes to, you know, are you going to, you're doing a tour anytime soon or? Well, we just uh, finished up the first leg of the tour. We're waiting to start the second one. Where and when will that be? Not quite sure, but hopefully news on that soon. Uh, what's your rehearsal process to get, mm. you know, all the dancing and the, this, the showmanship? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'll be honest. We were a little you know, short for time and preparation for this. So, you know, we would have practice with the dancers nearly every day. Um, some occasions for past tours I did, we would have practices from like, I don't know, 10 p.m. till 5 a.m., you know, depending on everyone's availability because the wonderful dancers I use, they're not like my dancers. They're professionals in the field, so they also have other work schedules and things they need to attend to. So matching up everyone's schedules is kind of the trickiest part in order to prepare properly. I always wondered, like, with K-pop, like how closely like the, the choreography like is so important with the music like why is that in, in k-pop you know what i mean so it's just in hip-hop too but like if you think right especially in k-pop like when you think k-pop you think about the choreography mm -hmm. it's really cool and different i mean in my opinion k-pop is one of the most diverse uh, for lack of a better word genres umbrella genres within the music industry and the thing that I love personally about K-pop artists is like typically every artist has a concept that they're attached to the hip with. You know, when I first debuted, I had my AI cyberpunk, like, you know, badass future chick, like concept that I came with. Some groups are like, we're going to be the sweet boy next door. Some girls are like, OK, we're the cheerleading squad. You know, there's always different concepts to go along with it. And to illustrate and to fully um, express songs, lyrics and meanings, you know, the choreography is just that little cherry on top that just adds a bit more flavor a bit more like oof. do you use the same choreographers for like consistency or do you kind of like we we switch it around depending on the stylistic choices we're wanting to make because for the hard-hitting stuff we have the same choreographer for the first i think f three songs we switched it up for the fourth one different choreographer for the fifth one um but we've been consistently working with most of the same like dance teams i guess for a while okay well that yeah. helps yeah it that does. helps for Thank the God. consistency yeah, yeah. Um, so we have a thing at pop dust called the magic box, magic box and it's just where you pull questions out of a box Okay, and who knows what it could be. Yes. Pick a question. All right. This says guilty pleasure TV show. Um, without a doubt, it's always RuPaul's drag race. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm a drag. Do you have race a favorite girly. performer. Oh, man, I have so many favorite queens. Um, one of them, I think my number one is Katya. Katya Zamolochikova. I love her. She is me. I am her. We are one. Okay. Yeah. I'm acting like I know who you're talking about. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. But Katya, I love her. Okay. All right. Why don't you pick another one there? All right. There's only a few in there. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to spread them all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Okay, y'all, I'm not going to lie. We have some American franchises in Korea, but the one I miss the most is Raising Cane's. Oh, yeah? Oh, my God. I love the sauce. The sauce is have so Have you good. been to the Post Malone Raising Cane's? What? Oh, okay. yeah. He's got his own Raising Cane's in Utah, which there's no reason you would go there. But, yeah, it's like, it's like a huge complex. That's like a thing they're doing. They're doing, like, celebrity. So, like, you could do an Alexa Raising Cane's in Tulsa. And it would be like K-pop themed. Let's get on That's that. That's a thing. That's definitely a thing. Let's get on that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So Raising Cane's. I, yeah. That's a good choice. Good it's choice. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a good one. All right. Could do a couple more? All right. Mm. Okay. Uh. All right. Uh, what do you miss most about Oklahoma? Um, I mean, without a doubt, it's, you know, 
well, my family lives in Dallas now, so I guess my my friends I miss the most about Oklahoma because I've known most of them for well over a decade. They've been my ride or die for years. They've gotten me through some really hard times. I've helped them through some hard times. And, uh, you know, they're just always my, my rock, my people I can depend on. And I, I don't think I would be in the position I am today had I not met these people. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> that was like that was like a that was the homies for real. Yeah, yeah. thank y'all. I should miss Oklahoma. All the people in the world, all the children in the world. Yes. Peace, love, world yes. peace. Thank yes. y'all. Yes. World peace. Okay, one more. One, one more? more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My favorite Korean snack. This is such a scapegoat answer. I'm sorry, but I love dried seaweed. I like dried seaweed too. Like it's not exclusively Korean, I guess, but like the brands we have in Korea are pretty baller. So. Yeah. yeah, I feel like you have, you. have you done commercials in Korea? I have not yet. No, that could be like your like your like have your own, your own line of seaweed snack. You know what? Mm, let's get on it. I'm here mm. for it. My yeah. own raisin canes and my own seaweed snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, and that's Magic Box. <laughs> you, apparently, you're into metal heavily. Yes, heavy, like, and you have a Slipknot tattoo. I do. It's from Duality. You cannot kill what you do not create. Have you ever, my cousin one time got a group of like nine of her friends and did the whole, the whole band as Halloween costumes. Oh. Shout out Beth Riley. That's a fun idea. Yeah. Um, have you, uh, do you have a favorite Slipknot member? Are you like Corey Taylor all the way or do you have like a, like, you know? um, I mean, I mean, it's obviously sad. I mean, I really loved and respected Joey Jordison, like the most insane drummer I'd ever seen. Uh, you know, rest in peace, obviously freaking legend but uh i do respect Corey though for doing stone sour and slipknot i mean yeah. spending two bands at the same time totally. it's like <clears throat> totally but, yeah. yeah um and i know that your your newer stuff is kind of leaning in like the pop punk direction a little bit yeah we're going there but could you ever see yourself doing like like metal oh hear you me hear you me so when i first debuted we made a like a metal version of my debut song with this wonderful korean metal band called diablo of course i didn't do the screaming they did they did all the heavy lifting um but i told myself that later down the line once i no longer have to worry about potentially losing my pop tone i want to learn how to scream like i want to learn how to actually do it because there need to be more metal bands with women singers you know there's not enough i can only really think of marina break from in this moment like that's actually true who else yeah. Demi, have you ever done the screamy thing? That's actually a very like niche, like, I don't know. That's like, you know what I mean? So do you have any old school metal bands that you like? Old school metal bands as Like in... Judas Priest or Black Sabbath? Or Black anything? Sabbath, one of them, definitely for sure. Yeah. Um, oh my God, my brain just blanked. Why did my brain blank on me? I mean, are are they really? I mean, Metallica. Metallica yeah, is Metallica. metal. Metal, they have yeah. metal in the band. Yeah, yeah, metal. Yeah. No, like Master of Puppets. That's speed metal. That's yeah. like you know. Would um Lip Bizkit count in there somewhere? Uh, no, yeah. not really. Rap They're metal, not really rap metal. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, yeah rap metal. Yeah. I don't know. I just did a um a uh, thing with Scene Queen, the singer Scene Queen. Oh. Who's got a really cool combination of like metal and kind of pop, mm -hmm. and she does some hip hop in there. Mm -hmm. Check out Scene Queen. Scene Queen. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Scene Queen? I have uh, seen them on social media many times. I've never actually tuned into their work yet, but uh, I shall yeah. be now. Yeah. Let's go. Let's look at the future. What does your summer look like? My summer. What does my hot girl summer look like? Yeah. Um, working on music for sure. Um, let's see. Also, probably working on a little side project I've got going on. Uh, you know, not too much of a spoiler, but I am currently writing a book. Like a like a memoir in a way, yes. About my you is know. it juicy? Is it like you're gonna spill some tea? You're gonna oh, like, uh... the truth will be told, but with different names, obviously. I oh, can't get okay, sued. you're coming up. Money, yeah. I can't sue. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, I uh, I will be you know ex explicating my life to you know whoever decides to read this up until you know points in my career so far uh, so I'm working on that um, and then also I think probably just trying to enjoy quality time with you know my friends in Korea while I can because summertime is a busy time for a lot of us but if there's free time we're gonna have a girls night we're gonna go in an amusement park we're gonna get drunk and pass out it's gonna be great <laughs> let's go let's go it sounds like you really value like leisure time and like your me time. I mean, not so much leisure time or me time, but I think I really just value my connections with other people more than anything. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Work hard, play hard, as they say. Mm, yeah. Bingo. Bingo. 
And we have to, we have our, our, the, your fans would be disappointed if we didn't ask this. Do you have a current favorite K-pop artist other than yourself or someone oh, you want to shout out? That, of course. Question, when is this coming out? This will be out in about three weeks. Three weeks. Okay, so it's well, okay, past Coachella then. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, one of my favorite artists who I've always looked up to for years is Taemin from Shiny. Uh, I've been a Shawol since their debut, so we love Taemin. But also, uh, anybody who was here in LA and went to Coachella a few weeks ago, shout out to ATs. Yeah. All right. Demi, have you ever gotten to K-pop at all? Cuz I've actually I think you might be the only K-pop like artist that I've actually like listened to. Really? She's a rocker girl. I wanted I to rock research person, too, on so. our on our guest, but right. I haven't heard K-pop music outside of yours. So, you are oh. my favorite. Let's go. Thank you. I'm honored. Yeah. Well, you, it's, yeah, your first one's your favorite. Now, the bar is here, so everyone every, anyone else coming along has to Hit that bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming by. We wish you luck on your transition. To, we, you'll be a star in America like you are in Korea. Stop. <laughs> thank you. This is a new segment that we're doing, um, kind of talking. I think we're going to call it Rising Stars, to be honest with you. Okay, cool. And Aileen Love that. Valentine, right? Mm -hmm. Valentine is a freaking rising star. I literally found her. Um, I must have seen a post that she did on Ask Nicely, that one song that she has on the new album. And like, there are very few artists that I find that I just like hunt down and I'm like, I need to figure out who this person is. So she is one of them. Can we talk about Little Rainbows like after death? Like how did this all come together? Yeah, so it's kind of like a very interesting ride. Basically, yeah. in 2023, I had done my first tour opening for two artists, and it was very weird. I was in a very weird place mentally, and I just was dealing with a lot of like depression and anxiety. And I was contemplating, do I even want to be a musician? Like, am I good at this? Do I suck? Which I feel like a lot of artists go through, and like it's not really talked about that much. Wow. But I was really, really feeling bad about that. And after I got off the tour, I also just signed a record deal. Um, so I felt a lot of like pressure from like this new team of, oh, we're waiting for new music. What have you been working on? Like, let's release something. And I was like, can I curse? Yeah. And I was like, shit, like, what am I going to show them? <laughs> so I kind of just told them, hey, guys, I am doing very bad. I need time off and I need to just like re get in touch with myself and they were super understanding they were like oh take as much time as you need do whatever you need to do and I was like cool so that like made me feel better and literally three days after having that conversation with them I just felt all my creativity come back to me and I was at my desk just starting a bunch of songs and that's when I started the first song on the album that I wrote uh zero zero memories mm -hmm. there was a sick video for that by the way yeah a mental video for that like what was the idea behind that you know what I mean that went so, dark. a little playground good like yeah like yeah well basically I just pulled up to a park right next to my house in Hollywood with my camera and my dog because I was scared that I was going to get kidnapped at this park at like 12 a.m <laughs> so i brought my dog with me. Shoot camera no it was a, it was like a what's it called not a vhs there's a mini dv it was a mini dv mm -hmm. so i took the mini the mini dv and my dog and i walked over with like my tripod and my little light and nice. i was just there for like three hours and then i had my friend come with the gas mask and he was in some shots where and do you I, even get a gas mask? Like, where do you I get it? I got it on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. I just Crazy. looked up gas mask near me. Wow. Yeah. I use Facebook Marketplace so much. What is Facebook? Oh, is it like where people, like, it's like a Craigslist on Facebook? Yeah. It's like, do you know Offer Up? No. It's like a reese, like like people can personally sell their stuff. Got you. And it's like all nearby, kind of like Craigslist. Yeah. I actually, aside from the music, your visuals, like those videos, for instance, even the Ask Nicely, I know I keep saying this song because I'm obsessed with this song. Also, shout out Matt. <laughs> so the other day, I literally sent Aileen a video 
that Maggie Lindemann posted mm -hmm. singing the chorus of Ask Nicely. I was shook. <laughs> in high school, I used to really like her music. Really? And I, I remember just like being like, like watching what she was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool and kind of full circle. Full circle. Her. Yeah. It was cool. But it's something about that chorus that every, because I felt <laughs> even when, she, so Maggie's singing the chorus, right? And it's like, you cannot, like any, any person, but definitely any girl listening to this song, you can't help but to like mouth the words when the chorus. <laughs> oh, I appreciate you know that. What, I mean? what about like that song? Can you just t take me back to that moment? Where yes. You, where was your head at? You know what I mean? So basically I had just gotten gifted this guitar from Fender. It was like a black Telecaster. And I was like, whoa, this is so cool. I need to make something with this new guitar. Mm -hmm. So I started strumming the chords in the beginning of the song. And then I was stuck. And then for months I, I went on tour. I didn't touch that. And then I came back to it after. It's and hard. Started, the, the guitar. It's chord. hard. Yeah. 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 So I started writing to that and I made the first half of the song, which is very different from the end. It's more like indie and chill and laid back. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the first half and then I got stuck. This happens every time I write a song, I like get really? stuck halfway through and then don't touch it. And then two weeks later, come back to it. So then when I came back to it, I was like, what should I do here? Like, maybe I should just go into like a really random section and try something I haven't done before, um, like belting which I, I always sing very soft and like airy and pretty much whisper kind of when I sing. So this time I wanted to just belt. And I always knew I had a range. I, I knew I could sing high, but I just never tap into that part of my voice. But this time, because I feel like it's cringe sometimes to be like belting all the time. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's like soloing like on guitar. Was, it's like, why are you soloing the whole song? Yeah, yeah. like belting was kind of out in my head. I was like, oh, people like mm -hmm. singing soft is like the cool thing right now. But I was like, you know what? Let me just try to bell and, and do it in a way that feels right to me. So I did that and I was just like screaming in my room and I felt my neighbors upstairs just hearing me record the <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> But yeah. Literally, I was in the shower earlier with my, friend, my friends on speakerphone, my friend Brittany. And I, she's just talking and out of nowhere, I'm just like, you just do. <laughs> she's like, wait, what? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> she's, what is this song about? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's basically just about feeling like you're asking somebody for what you need and what you want to feel secure in a relationship oh and like pleading, like I'm asking nicely, like trying to like shake them, like wake up, like stop doing what you do and just like, listen, like, listen to me. Wow. So it's like, it's, it's really that simple. It's that simple. It's really that simple. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> <laughs> also, the, the last song on mm -hmm. your, on the album I wanted to ask you about, because I really was going through like track by track. Mm -hmm. There's a voicemail. Was it a voicemail? Uh, no. So I, my mom is very sweet. I love her so much. And I really wanted to do Are like you Spanish. Yeah, my mom is Peruvian. Let's go. Yeah. So I wanted to just do something for my family, just like something that felt like personal for me. So my mom was at work and I was like, hey, could you just like send me a voice memo or like a recording of you saying something like something you want to tell me? And she was like, yeah. So then she just absolutely demolished and sent me this beautiful, in Spanish, it's like so poetic. And so every time I, I listen to it, I like tear up. But mm -hmm. yeah, she did so well. What does she think about, like, what's your family think about your situation? Well, what's your whole story even like? Did, are you in LA right now? I can imagine you're in LA. I am LA. in LA. So yes. what is your story? Were you, where were you, you're born in Miami. How did yes. you end up in LA even? You know what I mean? Was it music that brought you there? So I graduated from high school and then I got a scholarship for Berkeley College of Music. So I was at Berkeley for a year That's and a half. That's crazy. Yeah. That's I don't big. really talk about the Berkeley time, but yeah, did I did go to that? Boston. No, I'm not a very school oriented person. I feel like it really distracts me from like making actual songs and, and, being creative. I feel like they say it's like honing in on your creativity, but it's not. It's just like do these assignments, study for these tests, and like 
be a good singer, but it's not really like creative, you know? Mm -hmm. Like music theory, yeah. like, oh wait. Yeah, literally, like who uh -huh. cares? Who uses G for Phrygian in a song? So okay. yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> then I left Berkeley because I started posting some stuff online and it was like very small, like moments of like virality, but still a lot of like record labels were reaching out to me and I, I, I never experienced that before. And I was like, oh my God, this is really cool. And I, a manager, I just got in contact with my current manager and he was like, you want to go to LA for like a little writing trip for two weeks? And I was like, let's do it. So when I came, it was really cool. And I fell in love with the city and I started making a lot of friends. I met my current boyfriend during that trip. We had a session. So no is he also yeah. an artist? He's also an artist. He's a very incredible artist. Oh my um, God. Can we talk about, oh man. What's it like? I've actually never dated like an, like an artist, like in a serious way. Mm -hmm. What is it like artist to artist? Like what kind of like, you know what I mean? Well, all my boyfriends have been musicians, which is red oh, flag. My. I'm toxic. <laughs> um, like my Are high school. Like no. <laughs> My high school boyfriend was an insane guitar player. So that really inspired me. And then my college boyfriend was a guitar player. And my current boyfriend is like a full on artist. And I feel like I've seen situations where it can get toxic. Mm. And I've, I've always been very like conscious of like respect each other's artistry. Like don't make it a competition. Mm -hmm. You both have your own lanes. So I feel like our relationship is very much like that. He just respects me so much and I respect him so much and we just work off each other and we never get in the way of each other, which I, I can think imagine it's helpful, though, because I feel like tell me if like it's just it's just tell me if I'm tripping right now. I feel like artists have like moods in a way, like sometimes you have a week where you're just in a mood and you just mm -hmm. like lock yourself in a room and just yeah. out and make it into something. And that's hard for someone to understand who just doesn't like doesn't think that way or isn't like, mm -hmm. you know, in that creative kind of, you know what I mean? Personality type, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can understand that. Is that yeah. something? When I was doing the album, he was very understanding of like, let me just leave you alone. And when you're taking a break, like let's hang out. And same with him when he's in a creative spree and he's just staying up late all night. I know like leave him alone. He's working on something, you know? Like and it's not you. It's yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um and i think it also helps that i produce everything by myself and i i don't rely yes. like i feel like it gets messy uh. when artists are collaborating and like the boyfriend's the producer or the girlfriend's the producer and then it gets messy because then if you disagree on a creative idea then you take it personally and mm -hmm. that's that's where it gets complicated I think that's like what also really, really, really like fascinates me about you because this is something like very rare where an artist like produces their own work. And it's such mm -hmm. a big deal because there's so many things that like a producer like brings to a song, right? There's so like, you're literally having not just one person's taste, but two now, you know, there's like a lot of things with refining a song, not just writing it, that a producer does that kind of like that is adding someone else's taste to the mix so how cool mm -hmm. is it that you also produce yourself but it's also so hard like producing is a whole other ball game you know what i mean so yeah you and when you get stuck that? when you get stuck there's no other person to be like oh what if we do this or mm -hmm. spit out some other ideas it's just you so if you're stuck you're like well what do i do now you know <laughs> can you tell me about like your produce because I, I feel like current joys you know current joys like nick radigan yeah, yeah. he's like that's his but you can tell like that's fully his like his like soul in that project. And it's because mm -hmm. he's like the main producer on that too. So like can you tell me about just aside from the artist, like your producer journey, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So other. yeah, it, it was a crazy journey too. I always really liked playing instruments and I remember watching Avril Lavigne when I was like seven playing guitar mm -hmm. and I was like, I want to mm -hmm. go to Guitar Center and get a guitar. She's so cool. But mm -hmm. it started out with me just learning a bunch of instruments like piano, guitar. And then I went to to an art school and I played saxophone and I was very involved in jazz and the jazz community and improvisation. Crazy side quest. But um, wild. eventually I started writing songs and 
I wanted to produce them. So I'd hit up like producers in Miami and also they were all Are there any? Yeah. 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 There's a bunch of, there's a lot of talented people in Miami. I love Miami, but I couldn't find any female producers. And I feel like working with men is very difficult sometimes because they're very like stubborn about their ideas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I had a very like, strong vision in my head of what I wanted my artistry to look like and my taste and the things I like and it was hard to articulate that so eventually I was just I just started to learn on YouTube um how to produce and how to record audio and how to mix and how to sing into a microphone and the equipment that I needed and I I just what once you have a basic understanding of like a bunch of other instruments it makes producing pretty not not that hard I think that is so crazy. Yeah, I think too with like, not just another person, but I think there is a thing of like, you're a girl and like, you're working with, with dudes. Like, it's hard. It's almost like, can you tell the difference? Do you feel like when you're in the room, like at your desk? Because I've seen a video of you like at your desk, like you know what I mean, working on stuff. That's a different. Yeah. Do you feel more open to just like really be oh, vulnerable? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes, completely. Because. When I'm alone, I don't have to explain, like, what if we go from this electronic section to a screamo section? And I just, like, you know, it's, like, awkward. And if you explain that to most people in a session, they'd be like, um, I don't think that really fits there, you know? Like, I don't think it makes sense with the song. I feel, I don't know. I don't have someone to tell me no, I guess. I feel you. Are you playing any shows this summer in L.A.? I'm playing a show next week in L.A., um, I don't know if that counts as the summer, but are you gonna um, play Ask Nicely? I am. It's gonna be the last second to last song. I will be there in June and like I really I hope you play a show because I'm gonna show well, up literally I'm, just to be there for that song. I'm thinking about doing something by New York, like oh, New sick. York, Philly, something in that area later. Okay, in the year. so that's what's coming up. Maybe so we're still many in the there. world. Okay. Maybe, yes. Good to Perhaps. know. Maybe is all that we need, folks. No, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on this show. Check out the new album, like yes. for real, for real. <laughs> and uh, yeah, catch you later. Thank you to Alexa and Eileen, AA, wow, AA, for coming on the show. Um, and stay tuned for what they have coming up next because there's a lot coming up. XOXO. XOXO.